All right, everybody, how you doing Friday afternoon? Let's answer another core question, okay? Um, what value does a financial plan add to your life? And um, I answered it actually, I don't, I said basically, you know, it, as someone else had answered, a financial plan doesn't really do anything for you unless you follow it. But I told this person that I assume you weren't asking about the PDF. Here's your financial plan. You know, we used to joke about this back in the 90s when I started in the business that people would get the financial plan and throw that in the top drawer. Because, you know, back then, people, what, the, what happened was you would have these really long printouts of financial plans, you know, and projections. It was, also, it was all basically a way to just sell some kind of product, you know, like, hey, you know, you're underinsured, here's, you need this life insurance, you don't have enough investments, here's this, here's that. And it was really basically some kind of complicated way to, to sell a financial product. So it was more like this is, this was, and people used to give these away for free, but just do free planning, free analyses, these 20, 25, 30 page documents, especially with all the disclosures. And it would just basically boil down to, you need some of this and this. So I was assuming that she, that's not what she meant. I was assuming what she was really asking was, what value does financial planning and maybe working with a financial planner add to your life? So what I answered her was, um, I said, what is the, let me, I started with a rhetorical question, but I want to answer it to herself, you know. What is the value to you of having written strategy that aligns your finances to your personal values and empowers the achievement of your goals? And furthermore, keeping you totally organized, abreast of legal and tax changes that would affect you, and dynamic so that it adjusts to your changing life situation in this ever-changing world. What's the value to you of a strategy that did that? And if there's no value to you, then fine, don't have a financial plan. But let's say that does have value to you. I'm not sure, you know, however you value it. Then I said, okay, then you might benefit from some planning. And then furthermore, I said, if you'd like to delegate this task, you know, number one, you want, you know, because you like to use experts and or you're busy and successful at what you're doing, so that's cost effective to delegate this activity. And furthermore, you value your time so much that when you're not doing your work, you're following your interests. Like last thing you want to do after working 55 hours a week as a or 60 hours a week as a partner in a law firm is come home and do financial planning, especially if you're making two or three hundred dollars an hour plus and you can hire a financial advisor to do this for you know 150 or 200 an hour so that you know when you come home you'd rather be doing something else you know like your kids or a hobby or something like that spend time with your spouse if that if there's a value to you and you see that and in delegating it then you consider having an advisor team um Otherwise, if you want to do it yourself, at least have an advisor look at stuff and then maintain it yourself. But um, that's basically how I answered it. I mean, if you see value to having a dynamic plan that takes into account all the, the moving parts. I mean, what's funny about financial planning is you see all these questions on Quora and people answer them like, oh, just put a couple of index funds in place. That's not financial planning. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, you really think that's just what it is? What's, what's interesting is, is that you know, number one, if you save a lot of money and you make a lot of money, you could probably get away with um, lots of little lapses in your financial plan. Like there were opportunities here for you to to improve your situation a little bit more here, a little bit more there. And maybe you save so much money, you didn't need to do that. Um, or um, and you just wouldn't have noticed it, you know. So if your ending portfolio balance at age 60 ended up being $3 million instead of $3.7 million, you wouldn't have known. I mean, you know, you know, little changes, you know, in your 30s and 40s and 50s can make a big difference by the time you're 70. But, um, but again, you may not need that. So maybe you didn't notice it. But there are many large and many small things that an advisor knows or a good, good team, planning team knows that could affect you as time, you know, immediately and as time goes on to make huge differences. I mean, you think about some of the stuff. I mean, think about, you know, just even today, you know, talking with a client and making them aware of how their beneficiaries are labeled on their forms. There are, there are huge mistakes you can make 
and not so much a mistake. You don't even know you're doing it because you didn't know you had to kind of say it this way. You know, for example, like uh, per Sturpey's beneficiaries versus, uh, you know, just using the, the standard beneficiary form. If you have an IRA or something and you say, I want to leave my IRA to my three kids. And if I said to you, um, you know, if one of your children dies before you, would you want that child's children, you know, your grandchildren in that leg of, the, of your family to get that child's share? So in other words, you have, let's say you have three sons, or three, you know, one son dies and they, let's say all of them had two kids, so you had six grandkids, that son dies. Would you want all your money to just go to the other two sons? Or would you like still want that third share that would have gone to your deceased son? Would you want that to go to his kids? If you would, then you probably need to change your beneficiary forms. Oh, well, hey, I know some of you look at this going, I've got some free advice. I could do that. Great. Do you have any hundreds of other potential mistakes you're making just like that? You just don't know what you don't know. And again, if you want to spend all Saturday every week or something to stay on top of the stuff, fine. I mean, some people like doing that. I don't have a problem with it. You know, I have a guide on, um, on my website called Five Questions to Ask When Hiring an Advisor. I mean, literally, the guide would point people away from me 80 to 90% of the time. And that's a good thing. I mean, I have an ideal client type. One of the, my ideal client criteria is delegators. I work with delegators. I don't work with people that are calling me every day. What do you think about Uber stock? Or what do you think about, you know, um, um, Lyft versus Uber or, or uh, um, this or that? I mean, that's just, those aren't the people I work with. That's a stockbroker. They sit there and listen to your crazy investing ideas all day and make you feel good about it. That's not what we do. We do planning. And it's a long-term thing. And if there are short-term decisions to be made, we bring them up to our clients. We, we address them. But we're not, you know... Um, you know, so if, if you're a do-it-yourself or, or such, my guide actually tells people, hey, listen, maybe you should have a good CPA, um, a good insurance agent, and, you know, do a lot of the stuff yourself, check in with them. You know, the insurance agent would work on commission. So like, you know, every time you do something, they're getting paid anyway. So it's not like they're not getting paid to help you. Um, and just, you know, work with those guys on your own. You know, or... Um, uh, um, you know, and that's if you're, if you're a collaborator, there are some people that like to have clients that they chat back and forth all the time about the market or something with them. Um, but I work with delegators. Our clients are successful people that ha really have other things to do. I mean, sometimes it's kind of funny how quickly they want to get me off the phone. I'm their advisor. You know, they're just like, all right, you know, OK, good. I got to go. You know, they're talking to me because they got other things to do. So my type of client doesn't want to do this stuff day to day. And that's, you know, again. So just to give you an idea, that's why I wrote a guide to help people. And in that guide, it, you know, you would think, oh, geez, it probably at the end says everybody should come work with Chris. No, 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 the guide doesn't say that at all. It's, how, it's really the, I did it to help people, to help you figure out, should I, um, am I the type of client that work, should work with an advisor or do it myself or collaborate? You know, should I work with a large firm or a small firm? Should I work with a fee advisor or should I, work with the, you know, with a commission advisor, uh, you know, how should I, you know, so these are the kind of questions and you kind of score those and it tells you maybe the best type of advisor that would work, you know, the best fit advisor for you. So anyway, um, but that just goes hand in hand with what value does a financial plan add to you. And, you know, so it goes, if, if, if your financial, if that type of scenario I talked about where you have a, if there's, you see value in having a written strategy that aligns your finances to your personal values and empowers your goals and then helps get you totally organized and keeps you abreast of all legal and tax changes and changes with you in this dynamic world as, as your life changes, the plan updates and changes. And, and then furthermore, if you want to have someone that you delegate to make sure this stuff happens to, and, and most importantly, to keep everybody accountable, you know, all of your financial people, your accountant, your insurance agent, all those people accountable to you and to keep you accountable to your goals, then in addition to a plan, you should consider working with an advisor. So that's the uh, very long answer to my much shorter answer on Quora. So you could read my answer in about a minute on Quora, or you could listen to me for, um, you know, however many minutes I've been rambling on about this. But I think it's a really important point. And I wanted to share those, those kind of things with you. Um, and again, if, if you really want to optimize, find yourself a good advisor 
And there are advisors for all different types of people. I'll finish with this. If you think, you know, maybe, you know, just, you know, there are advisors that work with high net worth people and they do charge high net worth fees. Um, there are advisors that specialize in working with uh, younger people and they charge a much different fee structure. Uh, and then you also have traditional advisors like insurance agents. They're just going to earn their um, their commission on, on selling the product. And I got no problem with commission, actually. I, you know, I like to work on a flat fee basis, but I, uh, I also think that, you know, people who work on commission are, are fine too. You know, if, if you just need somebody for a service, you need your auto insurance and your, and such, they're going to make a little commission, but that's fine. You know, that's what, that's how they, they do it. And they get a renewal, you know, to keep you to service you. So, um, you know, there are advisors, but the point is there are advisors for all types of, of needs. So, uh, look that up and, 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 you know, find somebody, I mean, I think it's good. They have some education and especially experience in the industry. So if it's a, you know, you want somebody who's been around a little while because they would have seen certain things and, um, you know, and, and, and credentials are somewhat important. I have a few, but uh, they're, they're helpful, I think, in it maybe weeding out who's really serious or not, but there are some great advisors that are not a CFP or not a PFS or not, um, you know, a CHFC, they're, they're just, you know, really, I've met really smart people that just didn't go get those type of things. Um, now it's become increasingly important because of online and the other people tell you it's important. So if those guys were smart, they would just spend the time to get a couple of those credentials. Some of them you can get, you know, online, you don't have to go anywhere to get them. Um, they're like CE courses in a way, but, um, you know, those are, I, I think that they're a little, you know, get someone who's been around for a while, knows what they're talking about and has some education. If they're younger, definitely somebody with a CFP, you know, if they're 23 or 24 years old, they don't have the experience. So, you know, you want to get somebody who at least has more education. So they've got a good balance of some experience and some education and such, but, um, you know, but someone who also just has, has a, a, an a offering, you know, if you just want help with your investments, that's one type. But if you want someone that looks at your entire financial picture, they should say that on their website that they, you know, they, they cover everything. And then when you're in the planning experience, you should, they should be actively asking you about all these different areas. And if they say they're comprehensive and they go right to trying to roll over your 401k into their IRA in some sort, then, you know, maybe, okay, maybe we missed something here because, you know, in my mind, uh, you know, getting down the financial plan first and covering some other stuff first is more important than that. So, you know, you watch out for these little clues, but generally speaking, Find somebody whose service model matches what you're looking for. And um, you know, they have education, a good education versus certification mix. And uh, and they work with the kind of structure, you know, pay structure, et cetera, you're comfortable with. All right, so that's a summary of what a financial plan, the value of a financial plan is in your life. And Concurrently, the value of working with a financial advisor to help you implement and monitor and and adapt that plan um, on, on an ongoing basis is to you. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful and happy to, you know, glad that another quarter. And I want you guys to have a, you know, a great, great weekend.